Well, we're going to curve out into the adversary. So do we throw one of these away? Vanguard's very good with the Adeline. I think we'll give him one initiate here. If we save it till next turn, the pump squad is so good though. Welcome back, I am Dr. Ruckus, and today we are playing Mono White Humans in Ranked Aftermath Standard, building around Copper Coat Vanguard and the Intrepid Adversary, both of which have massive pump squad effects. In order to run Mono White Humans and get the most out of the Copper Coat Vanguard, uh, you have to forego a lot of really good cards, including Lay Down Arms, essentially unconditional removal, Skrell, which protects all your key, key creatures, including the Brutal Cathar, which is now significantly more vulnerable, Phyrexian Vindicator, which is quite good against things like Mono Red, completely shuts them down and also my favorite, the Steel Seraph, which as I've explained many times, is just good against all the things in the meta. But the plus side is you do have a pretty absurd curve from the Initiator Officer into the Vanguard, which pumps them up, into Adeline, which then generates uh, more human creatures, which also get pumped off all the Vanguard, and then into Intrepid Adversary on top, which again pumps everything again. So that's a lot to deal with, and we'll have to see how it fares to the prior version of Mono White Aggro. There is one card I do also want to talk about, which is the Knight Errant of Eos. I don't think this belongs in the best version of this deck or really any deck at all. It looks okay, and in theory, you see the value of this card, but number one, uh, you can absolutely whiff off the top six. It's not like you get to search your entire deck for the card. And more importantly, the thing about this card is that you have to take the entire turn off to do it. In your aggro deck, you curve one, two, three, and then instead of attacking and chipping it for damage and getting your opponent within striking distance, you then tap all your creatures to convoke. And yes, you get this value, but Against an opposing aggressive deck, taking the entire turn off leaves you susceptible to just losing in the next turn or two. And against a control deck, like it's not even like if you could if you could get out the Aeus and then also get a Peacekeeper and play it that same turn and keep your opponent off the thing they want to do, then that'd be fantastic. But the Peacekeeper is a whole nother turn off. So your opponent gets a chance to, you know, slow down and interact with your board state. So I am off this card. You'll see it in action today. You'll see an opposing mono white deck who plays this and you'll see what happens when they take the turn off and how that goes. So leave a comment if you disagree, but I don't think this card is in the po the best possible version of this deck. Lastly, I'll note the specialist, uh, kind of a fun of here. I think it's much better in this deck because if you can get back the Vanguard and get the passive pump squad effect, it's even better than getting back the adversary, which would require you to have five mana available, three to, to play the specialist, and then two more to get the pump effect. So that's the deck. If you want to support the channel, just watch to the end, enjoy the whole thing. Let's dive right in. Oh, baby, one lander on the play. Okay, four lander. At least we get to curve out. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep this. Put back a land. Okay. Oh, we don't even get to curve out. No one drop. Brutal. The mirror. Great. They have a one drop. They're going scroll. We'll see how our human's tribal does here. Vanguard down on two. Adversary on four. It's a vanguard. Okay. Well, we can't target a... The Copper Coat Vanguard with the Cathar. Backup Cathars. Alright, well, we'll take Skrelv here first. Otherwise, they can just grant Hexproof. And do we want to trade our Vanguard? I don't think so. I think uh, we wait here for a Squad Pump next turn. Or another Cathar. Ooh, ooh, stuck on land. Okay. Oh, they attack. That's great for us. No blocks. What's this, Ward 1? We can pay Ward 1. Yeah, let's do it. Take you, I'm sure. Auto pay. Alright, get in there. Down to 15. We got a big adversary next turn. It's an Adeline, a 3-4. They attack to get the free 1-1. One, one. We cannot block that easily. So we can do nothing in double spell and take all their stuff. But it's a little bit tricky because we need mana to pay for the ward. I wonder how the triggers order. I guess it could be okay. Yeah, I think I'd rather do nothing in double spell next turn. And if we top deck the land, um, we can flip twice. Knight Errant, alright. They get to dig. Guardian and Recruitment Officer. Okay, so we can actually attack here and double spell and take just the vanguard we won't have the um extra mana to target two things but i think that's okay so auto pay here get in with our first striking brutes for eight damage that's quite a lot 
Then we'll play out the officer here. Double spell. Flip. And we can't take everything, so... Take you. And then we can't pay the ward here, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah, we just can't pay the ward cost. Yeah. So they have their own Cathar here. They can pay the ward one. So take one of our Cathars. So we don't have the... Can't pick off the Vanguard. Because then we can get some free lifelink off the adversary. They hold back the 2-2, but I don't think they should. Block here, take 13. They have three blockers back. We have four attackers. I think we kill the Adeline here as well. Recruitment officer is interesting if we want to flip the night side, though. We don't have time for that, really. So it's just like this. Down to nine. More land. We get multiple squad pumps here. If we do nothing, they get a double spell first. I forget how that sequencing works out. It's been a while. We'll take the double squad pump. I think it's everyone here. They're going to trade. They trade there. We have lethal presented. They have to block with the, the Cathar then and give us back the Cathar. And they won't have hexproof. Yeah, they rethink that. Okay, one block there. Nope, think again. Okay, we're back to double blocks on the adversary. Lethal still presented, though. They have to do something else. They have to lose the Cathar then and give us back the Cathar. Okay, they chump there. Sure. Take everyone out. They take six, drop to one. They lose their Cathar. We get back a Cathar. If we take the arrows and they get it back, that's okay because um, they only get it for the Convoke cost. So we'll go ahead and take you. All right. Let's see if they have the next Cathar. If they have a land too, they can also pump the adversary. So this is a very interesting game because you got to see the Knight Errant in action. What they did is they had an Adeline and they took the entire turn off to Convoke and get two more cards. And it looks scary, but we ended up getting in for eight damage that turn because they took the entire turn off. And if the game had gone on longer, you know, they had the extra value from the two cards off the Errant. But the fact is in the aggro matchup, taking that turn off is not very good. Um, and in control, I think it's even worse. So this is interesting because I'm playing the all humans deck and I don't like the Knight Errant that much. It's close because it looks so good to get the value, but I don't think it's very optimal. So this is an interesting game displaying that, I think. On the draws is okay. <laughs> Opponents, <laughs> Fibble Thip, making some weird noises over here. I don't think I'm a fan of it. it reminds me of Jerry from uh, uh, Rick and Morty. Okay, I think it's a Thalia turn against Rakdos Bankbuster shenanigans. We'll see what the Banhammer includes. Maybe Bankbuster will be gone soon. We do not have the next land, so we're swinging here for two, dropping the Banalia after combat. They might take the draw, though. They eye the Bankbuster. They eat it. See what else we have. We'll deploy the Banalia. At least try to. They do take the draw. And uh, we really need to hit that next land. Ideally get a Peacekeeper down. Because things are about to get nasty. Let's see if it's Shelly time. It is Shelly time. Alright. Well, if we top deck the land, we get to Cathar and swing in. I guess they get to actually Bankbuster in response. So even that is not perfectly ideal. Yes, we take the draw. It's not a land. And we don't even have a big enough Banalia to swing in. So it's a very sad adversary here. And that is all for the entire turn. Okay, let's see them get farther ahead here. That's pretty cool artwork. That makes it all worth it. Just seeing this artwork has made the mana screw worth it. What set is this from? I don't even know. Leave in the comments, what's that comment one? That predates my MTG Arena time, I think. Okay. Well, it's not a land. Oh, do we just scoop? We have so many good cards in hand. We could still win. I mean, this turn we can actually attack with the Banalia, which is nice. So, get you in there. Enlist with you. We now have a five-powered creature that can get through Shelly. Land is good. 
Thalia, less so. We'll take the land. Five damage. What do you want to do about it? They eat it all. Down to 15. And keep deploying creatures. Let's see if they just Brotherhoods end us anyway. Okay, draw at least three cards this turn. Gain something like six life. Fable could also be gone off the ban hammer. We'll see. Maybe Shelly. I don't know. How wild is it? If all three of these cards got banned. Whoa. That'd be crazy. I'm definitely down for Fable to get banned. It's just every time it comes down, you're like, well, I have to answer the first part. And then it has value on the second part. And then you have to answer the third part. It's just too much. It's a too much three for one value there. Cut down Thalia. Okay. And the next Fable. Let's see if they attack with Shelly. Or the Bankbuster. Nope. Or maybe. Let's see. Just the 2-2. Two -two. How good is trading here? I don't like giving them extra mana every turn. This turn we Cathar take the Shelly. Power up the Bankbuster. We still get in with the Banalia. Yeah, this is fine. I don't want to give them extra treasure every single turn. Feels excessive. Alright. Hit our land drop. It's gotta be Cathar here. Take the Shelly. We power up the Bank Buster. Two combat and enlist with the Benalia. Okay, we press on. How much more land do we want though? They took our Thalia. We're not going to be able to double spell for a while. It's good against them in general, but they have so much mana at this point in the game. Do we want the next land is the question. We need land and then a two drop to make it good. Maybe we don't. Okay, they offer the trade. I think we've been the extraction specialist. I guess it gets back Thalia for free. That's not that bad. Is it one of the peacekeepers? Maybe it is instead. Or even Adeline. We already have a way to get through Shelly. Maybe we don't need Adeline. Peacekeeper is more annoying. Let's let's keep all the annoying thing, things against them. I think Specialist getting back Dahlia could actually be pretty good. Okay. Well, we're hanging in there. They get their draw, but at least no more life. Maybe we name Chandra or Invoke Despair off the Peacekeep. I mean, this is a big turn here. Six mana open. They get the next phase of Fable. They get the flip phase of Fable. Let's see how much damage they can uh, invoke on us. Bin two lands is a good start for us. Again, Brotherhood's end. Mm. Yeah, one turn slow by us. Well, multiple turns slow off the mana screw. So minus two pick off Cathar and the adversary. Get back Shelly. It's looking grim, folks. Ha ha, you're toast, she says. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with you. You're not wrong. I'll tell you that. Uh, okay, it's more land. That's a little late for you. We can get our Shelly again and attempt to attack this thing down. Oh, it's so bad. I mean, this thing survives. We're just absolutely toast. What else? Extraction specialists. Uh, get back Thalia. I mean, we're so dead here. It's not even funny. I think I'm part of the Bankbuster too. Yeah, this is, this is game right here. Game was when we got stuck on two lands for like four turns in a row, but... This is extra game. Yeah, I'll scoop. Because then they just uh, plus one here. Take through five cards. Get two removal spells or an evoked spare. Copy it and just absolutely butcher us from there. So we'll scoop. On the play with four lands and three three drops. I think we need to do a bit better. This is better. All right, we'll keep this. And I think we'll put back the Peacekeeper. If we don't curve out, we can still have an extra two drop in the adversary. If we curve out perfectly, we have Vanguard Adeline into adversary. So... Either way is okay. Mono black with the sleeper. No problem. We are looking like we're going to curve out. Play the Vanguard here. And up to a 2-2. Two -two. Let's see what they do this turn. Let's hope they tap out. They might pick off the Vanguard, it looks like. It's another sleeper. So they can level up one of these to make it a 2-2 two -two and trade. 
Oh, they attack. Okay, no, that's weird. Well, we're gonna curve out into the adversary. So do we throw one of these away? Vanguard's very good with the Adeline. I think we'll give him one initiate here. If we save it till next turn, the pump squad is so good though. This chips in for two more damage early though. Yeah, I'll give him the initiate here. We also get a 2-1 attacking token. Double block's kind of weird. I imagine they level up one. Yeah, feels unnecessary. Okay. Down to 16. Go for the throat there. One mana open. Concealing curtain 0 4. A lot of lands on our side. Still got nice attacks here. Pump everyone. And swing with everyone. Free block there. Eat 7, drop to 9. Okay, opponent levels up the curtain. We only have lands in hand. We have more lands in hand now. Definitely you. So if we do this, they trade with the adversary. Chump you. Still take nine. That means I have to block the Adeline. We still get in for six. We lose the adversary. I think it's still pretty good. So I think sleeper to Adeline and I to adversary. Take six. Drop to three. We still have a board with four creatures and an Adeline. Yep. So they basically need a sweeper now. Because even if they kill Adeline, we still have three one ones to get the last three damage in. Scoop. Okay. If I could go back, I might not have attacked with the uh, hopeful initiate on one. It was a little bit greedy. It, it would have gotten so much better if we had waited one more turn, but I don't know. On the draw, good hand. Keep this. Shelly on Demir. And yeah, we can go initiate on one here. That's fine. Tap out for an Evangel of Synthesis. Not a card you see every day. Duress. Okay. I mean, Benalia gets in next turn. So I guess we can go that, even though we forego the Thalia attacks. And no attacks into the 2 3. Look at this 2 mana 2 3. Putting in work, slowing us down. Another one. Okay. One blue open, but I'm not super worried about that. Maybe they attack. I don't know. Nope, it's my move. Adeline's pretty nice here. Happy to play that out. Nope, I always do this wrong. <laughs> Alright, enlist please. Enlist with you. Make you big enough to get in. Take the scry. What do we need? Anything other than land is fine. Pump squad is good. Probably don't need the next one drop. I'll do it like this. Trade there, eat you. Let's spin the recruitment officer. We could go Thalia Copper Code if we really want to. Um, if we don't want to go adversary next turn. Depends how badly we think we need Thalia against them. They've only shown us creatures so far, but. Well, there's a dress in there, right? Yeah, there's a dress in there. Invasion of a Monkhead. Alright. We got Liliana in here. I mean, they, Thalia must be good against them. We could bend the adversary and go with Thalia plus uh, the Copper Coat. I think that's even better. Oh, we binned it. My bad. My bad. My bad. Land instead. Yep, that was a mistake. Thalia's fine to get in there. I think I want to scry this turn. It's in list like this. Not a land. Let's not take the back of Thalia. They trade. We'll bin one more land here. Kind of nice we have Mishra's Foundry as well. We binned, what, two adversaries there? That's too bad. Plaza of Heroes. Okay. I mean, if they have dragged to the bottom, it's uh, just minus one. Liliana, sack a creature. That does not look effective. Enough with the mysteries. I've come for answers. 
We have exactly lethal if they don't have anything else. Alright, opponent burns their full timer. And we swing for exactly lethal here. Actually, we now have more than lethal. Mistress Foundry was in loan. And because we have Thalia, they have, um... They can't even cut down. Go face. Face is the place. 2-0, buddy, despite the rope. On the play, this looks keepable. A lot of good 3-drop options. We'll just play the adversary on 2. Mono Red. Swift Spear. Okay. Cathars are okay, but die easily. I think we might Peacekeeper Adeline this turn. In the festivities, 1 damage everywhere. Okay. So Adeline doesn't even kill the Swift Spear if you block. I think we'll try a Peacekeeper here. It's very good attacking. Maybe we just eat the damage this turn. Alright, let's try Adeline. Next turn, Peacekeep. And then if they don't have removal, we can run out the Brutal Cathars. Definitely didn't want to run out Brutal Cathar this turn, because with one man open, they can play with fire, potentially. So we'll go no blocks here, give them their damage. If they have the Lightning Strike, whatever, it's fine. Down to 15. Invasion of Regatha. Okay. That's interesting. But now we peacekeep. Pump the Adeline up. See what's in that hand. Ren's Resolve. Is this the same thing? Yeah, this is the same thing. Lightning Strike and the festivities. Probably Lightning Strike. It's interesting because they chose different names. That's actually very smart. Because now uh, if we wanted to pick one of them. We'll take Lightning Strike though. That's fine. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, good tip if you're playing Mono Red. Run differently named cards that do the same thing to play around the Peacekeeper. Pretty niche, but... Um, you know, Mono White's a big percentage of the meta, so it makes a lot of sense. So they have a Phoenix and another Swift Spear. We know their entire hand. In the festivities. I think no blocks here. Very scary with the Phoenix Chick in hand. Peace Keep, eh? So we can just completely take them off Lightning Strike, which is kind of interesting. That allows the Catharis to survive at some point in time. I think let's try it. We could also make Ren's Resolve take their entire turn. That means they're kind of priced into playing the Phoenix. We don't really want them to play the Phoenix though. I guess we'll take it with the Cathar. Let's completely take them off Lightning Strike. And then, um, then we can play the Cathars and hope they survive, including to take out the Chick, which doesn't have haste. They're down to nine now. Ren's Resolve first. Pump these guys up. It's a land and a lightning strike, but it's very expensive. So it's just the land for them. We don't know what that last card is. Another impulse, one mana open. Prowess again. But we know every card in hand. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. We can swing back for lethal. Do nothing. How good is a specialist here? Get back the adversary is okay. We probably just Cathar though. I think it's just Cathar. Take one of you guys. Swing with a lot of Vigilance. Chump there. Down to two. And with Lightning Strike priced out, I don't think they can get here. Impulse, too little, too late. Land. And no scoop. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Alright, thank you for staying to the end. If you enjoyed today's video, please drop a like, a comment, a subscribe. All that stuff helps out the channel so much. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.